Hey guys, my name is David East, and in today's screencast, we're going to be making a flat mail application. So the Design Moto designers created this design for me to turn into HTML. And as you can see, it's a mail application. Right here is for the users to sign up. And if we hide this panel, we can open up the inbox panel. And in the inbox panel, there's some checkbox action going on to be able to select all or just individual emails. And then we have a compose screen where the users can compose emails and then they can manage any files that they've attached. Now we're not going to be actually hooking this up to any email providers or doing any attachments, but we will do all of the UI interactions here. We're going to be using Flat UI to get a nice kickstart on this project. And since Flat UI is written on less, we're going to be writing less as well. And for those of you who aren't familiar with less, less is essentially JavaScript that compiles down to CSS. With less, you get variables, which is a huge feature. So you can assign colors to variables as well as other CSS measurements. Less also has this concept of mixins, which are kind of like functions that allow us to shorten out the amount of code we want to write. The example right here is one for rounded corners. The at radius, which is defaulted to five pixels. So you can pass in a variable, which will be the radius value, and it will set the value for all the vendor prefixes that do border radius. So as you can see when used is extremely useful and cuts down on several lines of code. Another thing less does is it has nested rules. So in this example, they have a header ID and nested within the header ID is an H1. And that's the same thing as you can see to the right where it says header H1. And to use less, you're going to need to have a less style sheet, which we'll be creating in a bit. And you also have to reference the less JS JavaScript file. And we'll set all this up. So here in Visual Studio 2013, I have a project set up called Mailer. So let's go over the structure of this project. We have a folder called Bootstrap, which is just Twitter Bootstrap version 3. Then we have a CSS folder, which will just be all of our compiled out CSS from our less. We have a folder named Custom, and this is where all of our custom less will reside. We have a folder named Fonts, and that's just all the fonts we need for this application. We have a folder named Images, which is pretty self-explanatory. And the same goes for our folder called JS. It just stores all of our JavaScript files. And right here, we have a folder named less, which contains all the flat UI less files. So let's get started off by creating an HTML page. I'm just going to call this signup.html because we'll first be working on the signup page. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to provide a title. I'm going to call it mailer signup. And then I'm going to pull in Twitter bootstrap. And below the bootstrap reference, I'm going to set up less. So the first line of code I pasted in looks just like referencing a CSS file, except the rel is stylesheet slash less instead of stylesheet slash CSS, and the file type is less instead of CSS. And then in the next line, I'm just adding a script reference to less. And it may seem strange to reference the less files before you're actually referencing the less JavaScript file, but this is the way it actually works. If you put the less file in below it, you would get an error. So the less file we're referencing is under the custom folder called mailer.less. And it doesn't exist right now, so let's go and create it. So here in mailer.less, let's just write some test code to make sure we're set up properly. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create two variables. The first one's going to be called height, and I'm going to set it to 300 pixels. And then I'm going to set width, and I'm going to set it to height. And this is just to show that you can declare a variable and then assign a variable to another variable. So now I'm going to create two more variables, and one's going to be called black, and that's just going to be the hexadecimal for black. And then another variable called red, which is just the hex for red. So now let's create a style called square. And now we'll set the height and width using the variables we declared above. And to demonstrate nesting, let's create a nested style. We'll say for any p tag inside of square, set its font weight to bold. Another good use of nesting is for chaining on classes. So if you need a chain on a class, you can use the ampersand, and we can say whenever we have a class of also dot red, we can set the background color to red. And whenever red is not supplied, we'll have the background be black. So now that we have these styles written, let's go and write some HTML to demonstrate them. So let's create two divs, one with the class of square, and then another one with the class of square and red. And inside of these div elements, we'll create p tags. And now we should be ready to see these styles take effect. So now in Chrome, we see this error message. And it gives us a 404, letting us know it can't find mailer. And the first thought might be that our file path is wrong. But our file path is actually perfectly fine. The problem is, is that our server doesn't understand what a less file is. Therefore, it won't serve it up. 
And when I say server, you can see right here that we're on localhost 7569. And that's because I'm running inside of Visual Studio, which always throws up a little server for you. So to fix this problem in the Microsoft world, you're going to have to create a web config that tells IIS, which is the web server, what a less file is so it'll serve it up. And if that sounds complicated to you, it's really not. For those of you using other languages and other server types, there's a similar configuration within Apache to do so. I'm not going to go over how to set up an Apache because I don't have an Apache server set up on my machine, but you can do a quick stack overflow search and find an answer quite easily. So I'm going to add a web config to this project. And with this code, we're essentially telling the web server what a less file is, and it'll serve it up now. So now that the browser knows what a less file is, we see our squares. We get our black square, our red square, and our p tags, which are bold in the middle. However, if you're not running on a server, you're probably not seeing these styles. And if you look in the console, you'll see an error message. You're probably seeing something like this if you're not running on a server. And in the console, you'll see an error message telling you that it can't load because cross-origin requests are only supported for HTTP. And I wish I could tell you a quick fix for this, but there isn't. If you're running less locally on your machine, you're not going to be able to use the JavaScript file. But don't freak out, there is a way around this. Instead of using the less.js library, you can download a program that will compile the less to CSS. One I like to use is winless, but it's only for Windows, so if you're on Mac, there's another one you can use as well. And that one is called Simplus. And Simplus is also for Mac and Windows. Winless and Simplus both work basically the same way. You add a folder to your location, which for us would be this custom folder within our mailer application. And once you refresh the folder, you'll see the less files within. And then you can select the files that you want to compile out to CSS. And in this case, we just want to compile mailer.less. So after I hit compile, I'll go back to my project. So now that I've hit compile, I'm back in my project, and I don't see a CSS file. But if I click a button to show all hidden files, you can see that mailer.css is there. So I'll include it in the project. And now as you can see, I have my styles minified as CSS. So now instead of referencing the less file in the less.js, you can just reference that CSS file compiled out from winless or simplest in your head tag. But in this video, since I'm running on a server, I'm going to use the less.js file. However, you'll still be able to follow along using winless and simplest. So let's clear out all the test code that we've created. So now that we're finally setting up for our mailer application, let's create a checklist of the things we need to collect from the PSD. The first thing we're going to want to do is, is we're going to want to collect variables. And the things that we're going to collect variables for are things like colors, font sizes, and common padding. And the second thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our less document to compile from multiple less style sheets. And the reason why this is, is that we can break out our code into small style sheets, and then at the end, it'll be compiled into one minified CSS sheet. So let's create a less style sheet for our variables. So I've gone ahead and done the homework for us as far as the colors go. As you can see, I went through the PSD and collected the common colors and set them into variables. So if you're feeling like I skipped over that a bit, we'll quickly go through the PSD and we'll take a look at the colors. And you'll see that it really wasn't anything special. So to get the colors, all I do is open up the water dropper, and then this one would be our navy dark, and this one would be our teal, and then we can get a gray, and then if I go into the font, we can even get a darker gray. And then I also can click on the red to get the color red we want to use. And I can do all this for all the colors that I think are going to be commonly used on this page. So you can see all I did was set those values into variables. If we would have done each one individually, it would have been way too tedious and taken up too much time. So now that we have the colors, let's look at the font sizes. So the variables defined below were all the font sizes that were found in the PSD. And you can easily find those by using the font tool and click on the font and see what size was used. And as far as common padding goes, there's really just two, and that's going to be used on the menus and then the inner content panel. And those will make sense once we use them. So now that we've collected all our variables, let's set up the less compilation. And the first thing we need to do is we need to import all the less files we'll be using. So the first less file we're going to be importing is flat UI. So inside the less folder, there's a less style sheet called flat UI. 
and that style sheet compiles together all of the flat UI styles. So if we import that, we'll have all the flat UI styles. So to import other less files, all I have to say is at import, and then we'll open up some quotations. And since we're inside the custom folder, we're gonna have to do dot dot to get out of the custom folder, and then we'll get into the less folder. And then inside the less folder, we want flat dash UI dot less. And the next thing we're gonna to wanna to import is our reset. And the reset just removes unordered list default styling, such as bullet points and padding. And since reset is inside the custom folder, we don't have to go anywhere. And then we're going to need to import our variables. So essentially this less style sheet will be the manifest of all of our styles. Any style that we're going to use is going to be imported into this less style sheet. That way we're only referencing one less style sheet while we're developing, but still getting the benefits of breaking out all of our pieces into smaller files. So now let's run a little test just to make sure that all this is compiling out properly. We'll target an element with the ID of test. We'll set its background to primary BG, which is the navy dark color. And we'll set its font size to logo font size. And even though these variables aren't declared in this style sheet, since they're declared in the variables.less, we can use them here. So now in the HTML, we'll create a div with an ID of test and we'll just provide the text hello, and we'll test to see if the styles are applied. And as you can see, our styles are being applied as expected. So in this tutorial, we set up our project to be able to use less. If we're running on a server, we can use the less JavaScript library to compile out our less to CSS. Once we've told the server what a less file is. If we're not running on a server and we're running locally, we can use a program like winless or simplest, which will compile out our less to CSS, and we'll just reference that CSS file. We created a bunch of base variables that we'll use as the project goes on. And this way, if any of them need to be changed, they can just be changed in this variables file, and we don't have to worry about changing them throughout the entire project. And then we set up one file that imported all the less files that we're using. So this way, we're only going to be referencing one less or CSS file. So in the next tutorial, we're gonna be diving in and creating HTML for our mailer application. And just like always, if you have any questions or want something explained in more detail, just leave a comment.